Hey, what's up guys? This is Alan over at Sonic Electronics. Today we're going to do a video on CEA rated amplifiers versus a lower quality, over exaggerated, non CEA rated amplifier. So some people really look at CEA ratings. Um, I think it's a good idea to look at them because I think it gives you a little bit better of a realistic amount of power that you're going to expect to get out of an amplifier. Where some of the other amplifiers you'll see, you'll see a thousand watt amp for 80 bucks. So, I mean, you know, it, you just got to be realistic about what you're buying and what you're getting and really looking at the specs. So what we're going to do here is just kind of do a quick little test to kind of show you. We already have the radio turned up three quarters of the way as much as it can be unclipped. Uh, we have our oscilloscope here uh, connected to our um, kicker ZX 300.1 amplifier. And so all we're going to do is basically creep the gain up until we have the max power unclipped and it will tell you what our RMS power is right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and after we're done with this, we're gonna go and hook up our competitor amplifier and see what the result is and see what the difference is. So let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and start creeping up the gain. And this amplifier is rated at 300 watts by one at two ohms. So we have a two ohm woofer hooked up to it right now. So we're gonna keep going up and see what we get. So right there, we got a little break in the sine wave, a little square off at the top. So and we got 319 watts. We're going to bump it down till it's nice and smooth right there. We have 308.7 watts RMS. So this is just hooked up in a test car. This would give you a pretty realistic amount of power. Um, you know, at the manufacturer, they hook it up to a special power supply that gives you a constant 14.4 volts. So that number may be a little bit higher. But this gives you a good idea of how this amplifier will perform in the car and actually give you um, what power it's going to say. So this amplifier by Kicker is rated at 300 by 1 at 2 ohms. And as you can see, we are getting 308 watts. So we're definitely getting what the manufacturer says we should be getting. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our uh, competitor amplifier and uh, see what the results are. All right, so we got our competitor's amp hooked up. So this particular manufacturer on this model of amplifier says its max power is 1100 watts. Um, and then on the box, it says 250 watts RMS at four ohms. So it doesn't actually give us a two ohm rating, which is kind of stupid and hence probably why they don't want you, you know, want to tell you it. But in theory, it's supposed to double its power. So like the kicker amplifier, at 4 ohms, it puts out 150 watts. That's what the manufacturer says. At 2 ohms, it puts out 300. So it definitely puts out what it says. Um, so we're going to see what this amplifier does. Still the same woofer. We're still at 2 ohms. So we're going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process that we did with the first amplifier and go ahead and start turning up the gain and see what the results look like. So here we go. We're going to start turning this guy up here. And as you can see already, we're at 225 watts and we're already clipping. So we need to break this, bring this down here till we can get, that's no, not good. Really sensitive little dial here. That's pretty much what we can get right there. And even that's kind of on the verge. So. This amp is supposed to put out 250 watts at 4 ohms. So at a 2 ohm load, like I said, in theory, it should put out substantially more power. We can't even get the 4 ohm load power out of this amplifier. We're getting 213 watts of power before it clips. Sure, I can make it look like it's more power. I could keep turning this up. I can make it look like it's more. You know, I can make it look like it's almost 300 watts. But if you see that sine wave there, that is really bad and that's not what you'd want to do. That's not how you'd want to play your music. So where you can use this amplifier, just like we did with the kicker, is bringing it down almost all the way here. And we got about 213, 215 out of it before it starts clipping. And so that's why it's important to look at a better quality amplifier versus, you know, a lesser inexpensive overrated amplifier. Now I'm not going to say that this amplifier is a piece of crap. Um, it definitely will serve its purpose. I mean, if you only need a couple hundred watts, it definitely is going to work. 
Um, but I mean, if you're expecting that 1100 watts, um, or if you're even expecting that 500 out of it, you're definitely not gonna even get it. You're not even getting what the amplifier is supposed to put out at its RMS rating. So there definitely is a big price difference, but this is why you wanna really be careful and not just buy something because it looks like it has a million watts and the price tag fits your budget. You might be better off you know, getting something of better quality that has less power because that's what you're gonna get anyway. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you out. Alan Sonic Electronics, peace.